Hi everybody, and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. This video is low-key sponsored by my merch store. You can pick up and customize a lot of cool stuff there to support my channel. In my last video in this Back to Basics playlist, we discussed how to play by ear using chords. And I told you about the one chord and the four chord and the five chord and how you could use your ears to figure out very simple songs and where the chords fit in those songs. Today we're gonna to spend a lot of time at the piano talking about a few different styles that you can implement in your playing once you start to get these chords under your belt a little bit to start making your chords sound like real music. Let's do it. I make music with chords all the time. Before I learned to do that kind of thing, I was just uh, doing like you guys, you know, like I taught you in the last video with uh, playing very simple chords. But, you know, nobody wants to boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck through their whole lives, right? So as I got tired of this kind of thing when I was a kid and I wanted to play what was on the radio, just another day for you. You and me in paradise. That was on the radio a lot. And uh, everything I do, I do. That one was on the radio maybe more than any other song I can think of while I was growing up. But I was constantly trying to figure out ways to make my piano playing sound more like the songs I heard than the boom chuck. So today we're going to go through a few styles. I'm going to show you my hands and we're going to learn how to make your piano playing sound like piano playing. In the first video, we talked about the one chord in the key of C, which is C major. That's in root position. We also talked about the four chord. You, the way you find it is you count up in the major scale. Right, one, two, three, four, and there's your four chord. We also talked about the five chord and how these three chords, with these three chords, and maybe just a couple more, you can play so many songs. The other two chords that we briefly discussed were what we call the six minor chord. A minor in the key of C, and also the two minor chord, D minor in the key of C. Again, if you'd like to learn more about how to build chords and notate chords and figure out chords like any chords, click the card above my head and watch my video about it. Let's go back to the Brian Adams song that I sang just a little bit of a second ago because I, I think, you know, a lot of people know it. And we'll just do a little bit of it. And it's not hard to find these chords on the internet. Any chords that you want to find on the internet, you know, just, just Google it. Type in the name of the song and then type the word chords and you'll find it. And, and it wasn't hard to find this one in the key of C either because I think guitar players play it using a capo and then fingering everything like C. We talked about a C chord in root position, right? We also talked about learning your inversion. So being able to take this C note and put it on the top being able to take this E note and put it on the top so that you can play this chord in different positions on the piano as you see fit. And the reason for this becomes really apparent right now when we start to play this song. And YouTube slash Google has been demonetizing every video for including parts of songs lately. So I'm not going to sing you the Brian Adams lyrics, but I'll, I'll just la la la. So if we're gonna play this C chord and it, it happens for a bar, one, two, three, four, and then the G chord happens for a bar, one, two, three, four, then it's F for a bar, two, three, four, and then G for a bar. But you can see that jumping around to these chords doesn't sound so good. So, so what I'm gonna do is to find like the path of least resistance. I'm gonna try putting this G note on the bottom. That way, when I need to change to the G chord, all I have to do is keep this note and move these two. And then when I have to change to the F chord, everything just kind of rises a little bit. So, so I've got this and this and this. The first pattern that I'm gonna teach you about how to sound musical when you're playing these chords, I'm just gonna call it the basic alternating eighth note pattern. Your right hand's just gonna go like this. So you take the top two notes and the bottom note and you alternate back and forth between them. Then you add a bass, much like if you were the bass player. So you're going to play on the first note of those eight and on the last note of those eight. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that. Then you're going to switch. So if we switch to the G chord, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
to the F. I actually did uh, the opposite of what I said I was going to do on the F chord, didn't I? Instead of going... Instead of doing this, because I, I think this is a better choice, actually. So, you know, sometimes you need to skew your choices as you go through your song. I, I thought that I was going to use these these two, but it's much better to do, to do it this way. It, especially if you're using this pattern of the basic alternating eighths. It sounds nice to have the notes that are on the top be a third apart. And this, instead of a fourth apart like it is in this first inversion of F. So anyway. You see how that works? Very simple. But after a little bit of time, this will get boring. You can do it for the whole first verse. Like you can just keep going. And and it sounds great. Now, now I do need to note that that I'm talking about accompanying right here. We're not we're not talking about a piano solo. This is me singing something and playing for myself. And and I know that many of you might think that you can't sing. I encourage you to try to sing because it's fun. But it, also, if you can't sing, you can find somebody else who can sing to sing with you, or you can whistle. Like who doesn't love a good whistle? If you if none of those options sound good to you, you can take this kind of pattern. Switch it to your left hand and play the melody with your right hand. Right? You can do that kind of thing. I mean, all of a sudden it sounds much more classical, but, but, the, but it'll work. And there are other patterns that'll work as well. I'll just mention that you can break up your left hand in a lot of different ways in order to have something happening down low while you're playing the melody. I do have another video about figuring out melodies by ear that you should check out because it's not always as easy to find the melodies to songs on the internet as it is to find the chords. And if you only want to play solo piano, you're going to have to figure that out. And I'm going to tell you too, it's a much harder game playing solo piano than it is to accompany. So, you know, consider that too, but I mean, it's worth it. One way that you can break up your left hand is with it's it's kind of like they do in in my life in the solo right it's called an alberti bass and it goes five one three one five one three one that kind of thing you can do although again you'll sound very classical and and it sounds muddy if you do it too low but but if you're if you're down lower and you're looking for ways to break up chords while you play solo piano i recommend one five three and oftentimes, one, five, three, five, two, five, one, five, or you can call it 10, nine, eight if you're, if you want to, but. Right? That's a pretty nice way. You're just opening it up and, and playing a pattern. So I, li I like that pattern. Now, back to accompanying, right? We had this one. And it works, like I said. You can play this for the whole first verse, and it's just going to be fine. You could play it for the entire song if you wanted, and it would be just fine. But after a while, it starts to get boring. So what I like to recommend is that you learn a few of these styles, and then when you change sections of the form. So, so we have a verse, we have a second verse, we have a chorus. Sometimes we'll have a third verse, we'll have a, a chorus, a bridge, all of these sections just kind of lend themselves to, you know, to being the perfect places in the song for you to change your pattern. So if you start with this basic alternating eighth and you do it for the first verse, you might want to do something different for the second verse. You might just want to change it up a little bit. How about, how about using the same position for our right hand, but breaking it up into arpeggios? Sounds a little bit like you're playing canon in D, right? A little bit, but it's in C and it's not. So this is the way you play top note, bottom note, middle note, bottom note, and that that's it. And, and again, you're playing eighth notes here. 
So it's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You can do this for the whole second verse and it'll sound just fine. Da, da, da. Right? Whole second verse. And then when you get to the end of that, actually, I think there's a pre chorus in this song. It does that, don't tell me. And I think it's a D minor. Da, 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 da. Right? Yeah, so maybe on this section, maybe you want to change it up with something else. So we're going to call this the simple arpeggio. Arpeggio is breaking up a chord. Oftentimes we practice them as pianists. We do it different ways. Or There are all different ways to practice your arpeggios, but you can also make different arpeggios. And, and it's just... You know, the practice of taking notes from a chord and putting them into different patterns. And sky's the limit, really, but I, I do think that's a nice one. So you could do that for the second verse, right? And then when the pre-chorus comes around, and we, don't tell me, we could do something different. And, and maybe we can keep that exact thing, but maybe we can add a more interesting note on the D minor chord. So D minor, right? So many times when you're playing rock and pop, all you have to do is add the second degree of the chord, and it can be on a major chord or on a minor chord, and it'll just add some color. So instead of, don't tell me, da, 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 right? You, could, you can try to add this second degree and see how it sounds. Da, 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 da. And you can do it here too. Da. That's a nice way, isn't it? Then here comes the chorus, right? And, da, da, da. And, and you can do something else. But I think a good thing to do would be to go back to the beginning. Do this basic eighth note pattern again. So anyway, that's all I'm gonna that's all the time I'm gonna spend on this particular song. Let's let's try a different song and, and go for a different pattern. Let's move to another key for this next song. Let's move to the key of G. Just arbitrarily I'm choosing it. Here we are in the key of G. Now we have to figure out the one chord and the four chord and the five chord in the key of G, right? There's our G and we count up four in the major scale. Here is our four chord. We count up five in the major scale, but let's make sure we know this major scale. There's a sharp in it. So by the time we get up to the five, we're going to have to include this major seven, which happens to be an F sharp. So these are our three chords. And again, it's a really good idea to practice their inversions and going from one to the others. Let's take the song With or Without You by U2, because this song has a pattern that gets used in a lot of songs as well, which is the eighth note bass pattern. It kind of goes like this. listen to that song. I mean, it's in a different key, but this is something I want you to get through your heads. Please don't worry so much about what key songs are in. I'd like you to be able to play all songs in every key, or at least all songs in a couple of keys. That really makes you a versatile musician. So anyway, with or without you in the key of G and whatever key it happens to be in on the U2 recording, you're going to hear the bass player playing these eighth notes. You're going to hear this in a lot of rock songs. And you can just imitate it. You can just be that bass player. You've got this option. Th this chord here is E minor. And again, it's the six minor chord. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you use the notes of the scale to build the chord. And you come up with E minor, right? And these chords are in so many songs. Let's think about, you know, what, what, about, what about the police? We, we hear the same kind of pattern in that. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Right, I think I think the bass player does those eighth notes in that song too. But you know, there, there's also a guitar part in that song. And 
this is perfect because it uses the exact same concept we were just talking about. All they're doing here is taking that G major chord and adding the second degree like we just mentioned. It's such a warm sound, you know, the difference between G major and we call it G2 or G add 2. It's such a nice color to add. It adds warmth. And you can add it to all of the, all of the chords when you get up to the 4 chord. You can add it there too. You can even add it on the five chord. It just makes everything a little softer, but the police totally did that. I don't know if that's the exact pattern, but, but it's close and it just takes these notes, but it puts the D on the bottom. And all they did was to find a pattern to play that sounded pleasing to the ear. And, and then they change it, you know, then they, they play it in E minor. Right here, they totally leave out the E right here. They just use the fifth and that second degree and the third, and it's beautiful. I, I really like that voicing. But it's an example of taking some pattern that sounds good and using it to accompany in your song. So back to With or Without You. We've got this. One thing you're going to do with these eighth notes is accent some of them. I hear one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so it's like the and of two, one and two and three and four and maybe, maybe something like that. But you've got to use your ears and listen and, and what you're doing when you're accompanying like this is you're just totally being the band. You are the edge. You are Adam Clayton. You're just trying to be these people and make your piano sound like a band. So you also probably just don't want to do this just with your right hand, you, but you could, and you could start that way, but maybe in the second section, maybe. You make up an arpeggio and that is a nice one as well. So in this case, you're adding an octave on the top and I, you know, at this point, I don't really care how you break up your arpeggios because I think you're starting to see that there are so many ways that you can do it. And if you want to get extra creative, break up the arpeggios between hands. Let's use a different song to talk about this. I'm just going to, I'm not even going to tell you what song I'm thinking about now because these chords happen in, I don't know, 40% of songs now on the radio, but we're going to, we're going to call it A minor and then F major and then C major, and then G major. So it's, it's like six, we're in the key of C, so we've got a six chord, and then the four chord, and then the one chord, and then the five chord. We call it a six, four, one, five progression. It happens all the time. That sounds pretty good. I should write a song with that. You know, say we've got this melody. Say we've got that melody. This kind of a thing works perfectly. All you're doing is playing one note with your left hand. Your right hand is doing this kind of Alberti bass pattern that we talked about before, but I'm using the inversions of these chords that are closest together, and it works just fine, and it'll work just fine for the whole verse. But maybe after that, maybe you want to break it up a little bit more, still keeping eighth notes, but changing your pattern. So maybe you want to drop your left hand. That's a good one. It's one, five, one, two, three, five octave. You can go back, you can go back and hit this one at the end if you want to keep all eighth notes. And again, we're adding that second degree because it sounds nice and warm. But maybe, maybe you want to cook, you know, when the chorus comes or the pre-chorus comes, maybe you want to start cooking. In that case, you might want to play some 16th notes.
I played so many 16th notes right there, like all manner of 16th notes, and I can't really tell you what I played, but I'd like to be able to give you something to latch on to to start to play your 16th notes. But as you can see, when you start to get comfortable breaking up patterns between your fingers, the sky's the limit, and it's a beautiful thing. That's a pretty good one. So in this case, you are going to be moving around from root position to root position on these chords, and your, your left hand is just going to be using the one and the five. That's how we'll go one, five, one, five, three, two, one, three, and that'll fill up the space. Again, let's start at the beginning though. Then we'll drop down to F. sounds really nice, doesn't it? I, I, make sure you got that. And do it again. And, and the reason to drop down to root position is, is so that you have the root in the bass. And also so that this pattern of one, two, three, five gets sounded equally between chords. Because when you make a pattern, oftentimes you want to keep the sound consistent as you change chords. Say that I went, and then I took the closest thing, you know, it would be, how many notes is that? It's, it's, it's four notes. So what if I took the closest way to move to the, to these notes, but, but I put the F on the top. It just doesn't sound the same anymore, right? If I break it up that way. So I've got to have, you know, the, the distances between the notes or the intervals the same in order to make the same sound as I move between chords. I think that gives you enough to work on for now. And again, just like my last video in this series, no worksheets. This is a concept that you can learn with your ears. You don't have to read it. I want to get you away from the written music so that you can start to create music on your own using all kinds of patterns and arrangements of notes that come from your own ear, from your own brain, from your own heart. It's my goal here. I hope it goes well for you. Pick a song that you like that has a few chords, use these kinds of patterns, break it up at the section, like I said, verse, verse, you know, change your pattern as you change sections and build your own arrangements. Post them for me. I would love to see them on your social media. Let's make a hashtag. Amy says, use your ears. How about that? All right, that's what it is. All right, don't forget, you can pick up my merchandise at my website or a lot of worksheets that go along with a lot of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.